Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. I am back in Maryland. I came back on Saturday. It's Monday morning right now. Um, I came back on Saturday, uh, drove back, took like eight and a half hours, um, which was, at least the weather was nice. Yeah, sang church yesterday. Now I'm back in action here. Um, yeah, it's really, really hot this week. It's probably hot where a lot of you are if you're anywhere near the East Coast. Um, so I like am recording in the morning because I went for a run at 6.15 a.m. today. That is just, that's what's happening this week. Um, that's what's necessary this week. It's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I have Juneteenth holiday off on Wednesday so if you're watching this on Tuesday that's tomorrow so I'm hopefully gonna like get to the water or something um we'll see but yeah home was really good it was really like nice to just kind of decompress and not have to think about dinner every night oh there's fruit flies all over my house um it's just that time of year if anyone has any good fruit fly remedies please let me know what they are we have a bowl of apple cider vinegar in the kitchen where the most of them are but um yeah if you have um if you have any remedies, drop those in the comments, please. Um, but yeah, it was nice to be home uh, with my family. Got to, you know, run in my hometown where there are a lot more hills, which is horrible, but also good for me, right? Um, went on a nice hike with my brother. We got no views at all because it was like nasty and rainy and windy, but we still had a good time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to renew my passport this morning, like, you know, a responsible adult who's going to Canada twice in the next few months, so I'll probably have to expedite it, which is annoying, but you know, life is good. Um, yeah. So, uh, in terms of knitting, I do have to like be a little bit more efficient than normal this morning because I, my passport thing's at 10 and it's 8.50, but, um, I'm just gonna go, I'm supposed to go pick up a prescription at CVS on the way. So we'll see how fast I can do this. And then I'm gonna really really hope that that passport appointment doesn't take more than 40 minutes because i don't think it's going to take very long at all because the forms are done i have the passport i just have to get the picture taken and send it and then i have to send my mom a pair of shoes but um yeah i um have a student at 11 and i'm like well i guess i could just go home and not have to drive all the way to work if necessary but because it's virtual but i'm like ah anyway um Socks are almost done. It's June 17th today when you're, this comes out on the 18th, but I'll probably finish the second sock pretty soon. Obviously you saw the first one. Monica said to me the other day that she wanted to pick these combinations because um, she thought I should be doing color work with them. And I was like, oh, sorry. Not happening on this sock apparently, but we're almost done. Just one more repeat of the lace and then the toe. So I may finish this up today, depending on how, what I end up doing. If Jordan and I end up going to Costco, if I end up going to a run club tonight. Um, yeah, I've never done doubles regularly. Doubles is when you run more than well, twice in a day. Um, but I'm thinking about doing it just to split running up into much shorter runs because you can just run like if I wanted to cover seven miles in a day, I could do three and a half and three and a half. And that actually wouldn't take me very long. It'd be like 30 to 40 minute run, uh, you know, in the morning and then in the really heat of the day, probably because I would probably do the second one at like five o'clock or four o'clock and that would be crappy. Although run clubs are at like 630, so it might be like a little bit less hot. But like also if you're with a group, you're not running fast. You're talking to people and meeting people and it's like, you know, so We'll see, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is almost done. <laughs> that being all said, I'm excited about this. And my socks um, in general, like I'm excited to like release some of them and well, all of them eventually, I think, um, to, to write the patterns like and um, get them on Ravelry. I think that'll be fun. So I actually have made myself a schedule. I've started making, I have my template, I, my first, pattern is almost done um, that I'm going to release and I will show you what it is. So I have this big bag of socks and these are my socks that haven't been photographed or worn. So <laughs> there's a lot of them, like one, two, I don't know, I don't count them. These ones, three, these are all from this year. 
one, two, three, four, one, five. So those are just from this year. Love these. These are my January ones. These ones I'm going to release on my birthday. The Emily Dickinson socks. Just for fun. Um, oh, that's a hat. I don't know why that's in here. Well, whatever. These are the socks that I'm going to release on July 1st. And it's hard to see the texture. It's kind of like a seersucker texture. This, These are my Ann Elliott socks. And I'm going to just like start teasing them. Because why not? I haven't photographed these yet. Um because everything in this bag has not been photographed yet. But I am excited about these. They're like, these aren't, did I say these are knitted in Mondeem? These are knitted in Mondeem, um, which is a Rosa Pomar 100% wool yarn. That's, uh, it's nice and sturdy. It's tightly plied. I've never had a problem like blowing through a heel or anything, even though there's no nylon in them. Um, and they come in great colors. So like, you can get solid colors. And I've knitted a couple of pairs of socks in the solid colors as well. There's like a deep red and I would show it to you except um, I gave them to someone for Christmas. <laughs> um, but uh, you'll see a picture of them and when my Lizzie Bennett socks get released. But I knitted, yeah, I knitted these in the Mundine because I thought that this texture pattern would look cool with, it's like kind of striped almost vaguely. Um, you can see it better on the stockinette, but the Mondeem comes in all sorts of fun colors. And if you shop at the Woolly Thistle, you can shop at, you can just buy this yarn at the Woolly Thistle. They always have it, but, um, I'm an affiliate of the Woolly Thistle and my affiliate link is somewhere up there. Um, yeah, but yes, yeah, so you can get this yarn there, but also they're having a, they have a sock bag. I'll link to the, like, I'll link to the sock bag. They have two different varieties of sock bags. So there's, um uh like yeah two and they they have different yarns rambler the woolly thistles house yarn is in both of the bags but there's like four other sock yarn or four yarns total in each bag and so there's three that are different in, in the um other two in the two options so um one of them has mondi that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> um so you can get a sock bag i think they might be on pre-order or you can just get sign up to be on the like notify me list when they go live um if you don't know what the woolly thistle is uh you must be watching me for the first time they're an online yarn retailer in new hampshire that specializes in woolly wool from all over the world really it's smoothie o'clock i don't usually record at smoothie o'clock but today i am anyway um and they they like basically import yarns from the UK, Europe, etc. Um, great yarns. Um, so if you like woolly wool, you should shop there. Um, so yeah, there's, oh my gosh, there's so many socks in here. Oh, these, yeah, these I did in hand spun. These are fun. These are similar to the Ann Elliot, but the pattern is actually different, which is hard to tell because this is my Catherine Moreland pattern. Anyway, yeah, lots of socks in here, like a lot. So excited to photograph them, to knit more samples, all of the, the above, basically. Yeah, it'll be a good time. So stay tuned if you like to knit socks. There's going to be a lot of sock patterns. Because I figured, you know what, why not? Um, and I'm excited about these. And then I'm excited to either wear them or give them to someone probably give them to somebody. I just like the first like 25 pairs of socks I made, I didn't give away. I just kept them and they haven't like, they're fine. I, you know, should probably wash them more often, but they don't like, they don't have any holes or anything. So I, when I knit socks now, I tend to give them away just because I'm like, I don't need any more. I'm thinking about like selling the <laughs> samples, <laughs> some of them just like on Etsy or something just for fun. Cause I don't need them. Um, I do like giving socks to people, but I have so many pairs. I'm like, I've given socks to like everyone I know. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. And then my other whip that I've been, well, I have two more. This is the vest and I measured it last night. Oops, the stitch, no, I was gonna say the stitch marker fell out, but it didn't because I stopped in the middle of a row. This is now 10 inches long. So, oops, excuse me, please don't fall off the needles. It doesn't really matter if these stitches fall off the needles because actually, I bet you there's something in here that could do the trick actually. Ah! 
another orange one. Yeah, let's do these. Little, I have these coconut stitch stoppers literally sitting right in front of me. These are really good stitch stoppers. They're styrofoam or some kind of foam. I don't think they're styrofoam, they're just foam. Let's, yeah, let's get those on the needles so my life is easier. Oh my gosh, look at that. So, um, yeah, if you're new, I've, or haven't been watching lately, this is knitted in, uh, mostly Jameson, no, yeah, Jameson's of Shetland is Spindrift. A couple of colors of Jameson and Smith's Duply Jumper Weight. Actually, there's like four Duply Jumper Weight colors. Because this whole, the, the white section, the Piri, that is, I don't know if you can call it a Piri, actually, I don't know if it's small enough, but the two teals are both jumper weight. And then this white is, and then one of these blues is also. Um, this, like I, somebody asked me, this is 1280. Uh, you can get both these yarns at the Woolly Thistle. Um, and I do have a Ravelry page for this where you can see, I don't even know if there's a photo, but you can see the, all the colors I used. So um, that should help. And then there's one BC Bio Garn. It's this, like, I think it's called like Iceberg. I think I got it at Woolen Company or I might've got it at a store. Um, it's a little bit lighter weight, more of a light fingering. Like there's like 306 yards in. 50 grams and, and that would be like like if you equated that Jameson's of Shetland and Jameson Smith would both be around 250 yards in 50 grams but they come in 25 gram balls so you have to do a little math there but yeah I'm excited about this I'm almost yeah I think I'm gonna do one more of each band so I'm gonna do one more of the smaller ones and then one more the one more of the bigger ones and then I'm gonna be ready to shape it and I'm gonna do a v-neck I've done this before so I guess I could just consult that pattern to see where I should do the decreases I think I should do them every fourth row so I'm gonna make a next deke for the v-neck um, and then yeah it'll be it'll be nice we'll do that and um, some sleeve shaping I think I might do sleeve shaping from a Murray Wallen pattern um and just sort of uh yeah and then I and then I can do sleeve shaping on the sleeves as well I can sleeve shape the caps so that they're all like more so that I can set them in which I don't really ever do I did that on my very first barrel sweater but I didn't shape them at all I just sewed in the sleeves um I started with the sleeves to like basically check my gauge. So my lap wing sweater by Marie Wallen had set in sleeves. Um, and I actually did a good job. Like it looks really good. I follow a YouTube tutorial. Like I didn't just do it off the cuff. I followed a tutorial to see like how I should set the sleeves in. And that was a very good idea because it ended up looking really good. So um, yeah. Oh, I should never. I like literally wrote down here what I'm wearing. This is Velocore by Andrea Mowry. Um, I did neck shaping on this. So the original pattern, it has a, it's just, you knit, you knit it in the round up to the sleeve split and then you do the front and back separately but identical. And so it has just like a split kind of boat neck, but I don't like that because it comes up really high. So I actually did the whole thing in two pieces because I didn't want my gauge to change when I started working back and forth instead of in the round. Um, and yeah, that was a good choice. So I, um, I did some sleeve shaping and I like I or some neck shaping by just putting some stitches on hold here and then doing a couple of decreases here to make it round and then just knitting flat for a couple more inches until the front matched the back because I did the back as just a rectangle. I used a crazy Zauber ball for this. For the orange, the blue was a uh, sock yarn that I dyed. And then um, the white was Barocco Vintage, no, Remix, Remix Light, which is like a blend of cotton and I don't know, some other stuff, linen. It's like really nice for the summer because it's lightweight, but it's still like natural fibers. Um, so yeah, anyway, I will link my project page, but I don't think I did notes on my neck shaping on my project page. And I always like knit something like this and I'm like, wow, I love this. I want to knit another one, but I'm like, I never will because there's so many more patterns that I want to knit. <laughs> and there's only so much time in the day when you have a lot of hobbies. 
and a job like I do. So yeah, um, that's fun. And speaking of Fair Isle, I think I mentioned this on last week's um, episode, but I didn't have it to show. My Natalie Cowell is on Ravelry now. It's not exclusive to the Woolly Thistle and a Kid anymore, um, which was awesome, except then they ran out. <laughs> so, uh, because it was, it was popular. Yay. That was a good thing. So, um, this is my Natalie Cowell. It's a Fair Isle Cowell. I named it after my grandma because I gave her the first sample, which was green. Then I made myself this teal one. I say myself, I'll probably give it away. Let's be honest. Um, like, again, I could, something I could just like sell and make money off of, but I tend not to do that because I'm like, I want to keep my friends warm, but I love this. I might actually, like I said, I might keep this one, even though I have one that's also blue. This one's more teal. I thought about doing my Fair Isle sweater in this exact palette basically, but then I didn't, I wanted it to be brighter. So it's brighter, but yeah, you can get this. It's on Ravelry. Uh, it's up there, um, somewhere. Um, yeah. So thank you for supporting me if you want to buy this or you can get it for a friend because you can do that on Ravelry, which is fun. Yeah. Um, somebody asked me, I think in an email actually, which I still haven't replied to, so I should do that about moths up here. Um, and so I have only lived here for six months, seven months, maybe. Um, and it's been mostly cold weather. So moths don't really come out in cold weather. They mostly come out in summer. Um, so I actually don't know what's going to happen with moths. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. If moths do show up, I'm going to have to like, I have basically my plan is to just like put everything in vacuum seal bags and Rubbermaid containers. Um, to just, just for the summer to, I don't know, I don't know, put them, stack them somewhere, um, just as like an emergency situation kind of SOS. Um, but moths are attracted to dark places. Um, and, uh, there is not like, I mean, obviously it's dark at night here, but there's so much light in the studio that I well, they're attracted to like lamps in the dark, right? I don't know, but they like hang out in dark places. I'm like, first, okay, the two things that would worry me, would I think if I stash my stuff in the dark? Maybe I'm wrong. Somebody can correct me on that. Like, I don't pretend to know everything. But also, proximity to the outside world. So I have windows, obviously, but I don't open them very often in this time of year because it's hot and if I do open them they have screens like good screens so nothing can get in from the outside and I'm on the third floor so I am not close to any outside doors here in the studio and like one of my friends my friend Sarah has had moth problems in like two places where she lived and I think it's because her yarn is stored close to like doors to the outside and like moths can get in it easily I don't know but like that's one thing that I wonder um I don't know if they're like and they're attracted to things that smell like humans. So like the yarn hasn't been worked with. So I don't know if they would, I mean, they do eat yarn, but like, I don't know, I clean my stuff. Like I clean my sweaters and I put them in vacuum bags in the summer and like put them under my bed. But like, yeah, my old house also didn't have a problem with moths. And I kept this in the basement where it was pretty damp. And like, it wasn't like a, it was not a basement you could live in, like sleep in, but it wasn't like our current basement is like dirt. It has a sump and like, yeah, I store stuff down there, but definitely that's like, I don't like to go down there and it's like not easily accessible like it was at the old house. So, um, I wouldn't store yarn down there cause it's kind of gross and they would stink. But, um, but yeah, I don't, I haven't seen any moths in here. If I do, I'm going to have to come up with a plan and I will let you know what that is if and when that happens. But anyway, um, yeah. Otherwise I've just been kind of trying to work through my whips this month. I would really like, I have like three, four or five, like kind of a few like that are like things that are like, you know, 90% done or half done or whatever, somewhere between half and 95% complete freaking fruit flies. Um, so 
that's one thing I'm actually gonna really actively try to do like I mean I like I would like to say I'm gonna spend some time every day working on an older whip it won't be every day I know myself but like you know church music kind of goes not dead in the summer but we have less stuff so I don't have to do Thursday nights and stuff so I'm on the road less I have some more free time um, to kind of do that maybe I should use specifically my driving time to church on Thursdays that I'm, I won't be driving to church. Like, you know, four o'clock to 5.30 or whatever. And then like 9.30 to 10.30 on Thursday nights to do, well, no, I'm trying to go to bed because I have to get up so early to run now. I would really like to be going to bed by like, I would love to have my lights out by 9.30. I, like, I realize the only person can, who can control that is me. So um, I need to do better. This is me saying right here, I need to do better. Uh, what else? Yeah, the whips. There's a few. Those mittens. There's a cowl for John Arbin that I'm trying to get done. The traveler shawl is another whole story, and I will tell you about the the current state of that spin. It's getting there. Almost done. Um, and there's like, I don't know, a hat from Lina. One. One thing I've realized is <clears throat> I feel like I've been really productive with knitting in like the last year ish um even though I've had a lot of other things going on like I'm like I'm still knitting a lot of stuff and I'm knitting some like complicated stuff and some you know stuff that's taking a long time but like I've gotten a lot of things done um why isn't my stash diminishing at all and I realized like it's because I've been like knitting with the with the new yarn like because somebody asked me to make it for them or whatever reason um or like I spun the yarn and then I immediately knit with it or something like even the fair isle piece that's almost all new yarn the like green sweater that I made right here oh, this was new yarn the socks aren't new yarn but they're not the yarn's not coming out of there the bag's over there so like I'm not seeing it diminish in the sock cave which is this um yeah so like the Guernsey that was new yarn so that's why I decided to do that Lina challenge, which was me deciding that I should knit a pattern out of every single edition of Lina magazine um, with yarn that I already have. So I don't know if I'm going to make it through every single one with yarn I already have at the moment, but I'm going to make it through like 15 issues at least. <laughs> so that's good. Um, that is, that is good. Um, but yeah, I haven't really been working on that. So that's one thing that I would like to kind of also do this summer, I guess, um, to get back to that. So that's good. Okay, let's talk about the Traveler sh spin and then I will show you my Archie progress. So um, these two bobbins, where's the other one in there? are already done. So this is the BFL. This was like a mixed BFL. And then this is this some yarn that I, or fiber that I got at Rhinebeck, which I can't remember the Spinner's Hill or something fiber. And then there was some Shetland that I also finished it with because there was only 50 grams or two ounces, I guess, 58 grams ish of the first one. So I had like another probably 30 grams of that Shetland, maybe 20 grams of that Shetland that I added on. And then this, I don't know, I should weigh these. There's probably some yarn underneath or some singles underneath them though, but regardless, I should still weigh them. And then it looks like there's more of this one, but it's hard to tell like how thick the singles are. So you don't actually know how much yardage is on these. The third one on the bobbin, this is old singles, so that doesn't count, but it's a gray and, and orange and yellow. It's really fun actually. This is from Feeder Brook. I got this one at right back. It's BFL. And the braids sometimes just have like little felted bits, which is a little bit annoying because it's more neppy than some other um, fibers I've used, but I don't hate it. And yeah, I worked on this a bunch when I was at home. I did a good job on it. I need to like be sitting down with like a good audiobook or a TV show. I've been watching Hacks still. I'm not done with Hacks, but it's really funny. It's on Max. Um, and yeah, I listened to some of Huck Finn. My mom was reading James, which is a story. I think it's a novel that's written from the, from Jim's point of view, the fellow who travels with Huck. 
Um, and so she never read Huck Finn because she didn't read that in high school because she grew up in Canada. Although my brother didn't read it in high school either because they got rid of the American literature class in 11th grade at my high school before Ian was in junior year, I guess, which is wild to me. Um, he took like two um, other classes, like two separate classes that year. And then he took like AP literature, which I also took in my senior year. It doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, she never read that. And so she she got that on Audible and was narrated by Elijah Wood. And she was like, you should listen to this. So I started listening to that and it's pretty compelling. I haven't read it since I was in high school. Um, and, uh, but Elijah Wood is such a good narrator, <laughs> obviously. Um, so that, and then I'm gonna listen to James, which I'm excited about. Um, yeah, I read a lot at home. I finished a couple of books that I just had had. I told you this. Um, and one thing I would like to do is like work through my Goodreads this summer and see like all the books that I like had started at some point and either finish them or get rid of them, um, clear them. So still working on that. I was reading the Britney Spears autobiography, but I can't find it. Like it was somewhere and I must have like packed it somewhere and not taken it out because I see the cover. Maybe it just fell behind my night table, but it was a really quick read. I was just like reading it when I was waking up at 4 a.m. This was like February or March or something. Um, and I kept like waking up at three, four in the morning and being like completely unable to sleep because I had racing thoughts. And so um, my friend Simona from choir, who's a psychiatrist was like, you should just read a book and get lost in some other story. And then maybe you'll be able to fall back to sleep. Anyway, um, I'm reading. I guess we're talking about books now, so I'll tell you this and then um, I'll show you my Archie progress. Uh, this I found in my house, Pond by Clara Louise Bennett. This is very short, not very, very short, but it's pretty short. Um, just kind of like a woman who lives says on the outskirts of a small coastal village sidestepping the usual conventions of narrative the woman ruminates on the charms of a bunch of stuff um yeah it's kind of cool um this i've had for a long time i don't know if anyone's read it but yeah it was on my bookshelf at my parents house so i just had to bring this back with me and then this one has been on my bookshelf forever i got this like two years ago at the dud avocado um which some of you might have read i got this i was with a friend my friend lila from grad school and we were in manchester vermont for the day like hanging out because her her parents lived near there and she was with them at the time because it was like the summer after vaccination but it was still kind of covid and she was living with them or staying with them for a while um and I was in Vermont, so I just drove, it's like, you know, an hour and a half, um, to just meet her and hang out with her in Manchester for the day, um, go shopping and stuff. And there's a really nice bookstore. And she was like, this is a great book. Have you ever read it? And I said, no. Um, and she was like, you should buy it and you should read it. And I was like, okay. And then I didn't read it. So I decided I should read that because Lila's recommendations are very good. She and I have similar taste. So if you've read it, you can tell me if it's good. I just read like the first couple chapters before church yesterday when I was sitting at Tate having a cafe au lait near church and that was fun. So Archie. Okay so I washed a piece of Archie with unicorn scour which was great. It got very white. Um, I think I probably showed you this. I can't remember. Okay a couple things here. So this is the first bobbin that I spun on Felicity, who's right there. The second Archie Bobbin is on Felicity right now. Um, but then I forgot to bring my unicorn scour home, so I washed the rest of my, my Archie piece with Dawn dish soap the same way, like two washes, a rinse, and then I dried it, and I did it in a laundry bag on the stove. So I don't think it's as white. I also, like, this part of Archie had... Um, more like VM, more like brown spots that were mud or dirt or, you know, feces, whatever. So I didn't take them out before I washed them. I clipped the really kind of felted ends, like dirty and felted ends off before I combed it. But I just with scissors, which maybe I'm not supposed to do. I don't know. I've never skirted a fleece. 
um, but I like clipped those off but there was definitely like more like residue of just like dirt when I was combing it which is fine like stuff falls out so I'm not sure if it's the same color well, they look similar, but this one's a little, yeah, you can see this one's the, the one I do with Unicorn Scour is more pure white, and this one is a little bit off-white. So what I'm going to do is spin a third bobbin of the new stuff, because I've got a huge bag of nestlets. Um, I'm going to spin these on another bobbin, and then ply that with one of the super white bobbins, and then spin another bobbin of the more off-white, and then ply that with the second bobbin of white to, like, distribute it properly I guess as much as possible and then I'll have a couple of skeins like that and then it, the rest of it will be just the off-white um but I'm not sure how what the, the the division will be so anyway um yeah and then I'm gonna dye all of it after I've spun the skeins which I don't usually do um but I wanted to start spinning it and I didn't have the dye that I wanted I want to dye it like almost a neon green um decided that when I start dyeing stuff this summer I'm gonna get the neon jacquard dyes like a few of those like neon pink neon yellow and like neon greenish and then um and then I'm gonna do my sweater my yarn in that in that color and I'm gonna have a neon green sweater because I think that's fun so yeah that's this is a project but um I actually really enjoyed this and I didn't take you know I only took like a quarter of this fleece so <laughs> I didn't have like too big of a um project on my hands but if I really like it then I can get another fleece at Rhinebeck that was kind of what I thought I was like I just want to knit like one sweater um like I have enough other projects and if I finish enough more projects <laughs> I can get a fleece at Rhinebeck that was kind of my reasoning here and I thought that would be fine um so anyway that's the yeah and there's but there's so much that comes off um when you comb it like stuff that's like second not second cuts necessarily just like the you know the short shorter fibers whatever so I saved all that and I'm gonna stuff pillows with it and then hopefully someday knit pillowcases I don't know that would be fun maybe some fair isle pillowcases maybe I'll use some hand spun for that I don't know um uh, you know I I literally have an endless list of projects it's wild so that's been really fun I've really enjoyed spinning Archie on the Felicity and I'm trying to again see you know if I if in a perfect world I would probably spin you know, 15 minutes a day at least or more on each spinning project. So, you know, we'll see how far I get with that this week. It's a, I don't care if I miss a day, but it's nice to like prioritize time for it. And yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm running really early, then I can do a little bit more spinning before I start work, especially if I work from home, which, um, cause then I don't have to commute twice. So yeah, the only, I mean, the main reason I like to go to work in the summer is so I can swim, but my mom and I got our noses pierced last week. Look at that, I got my nose pierced. So I can't swim for at least a couple weeks. It's funny, my, the piercer told me to wait seven to 10 days before going swimming. And she seemed like she knew what she was talking about. She like owns a piercing shop. She was like a 45 year old woman who was not heavily pierced or tattooed. Like she clearly knows what she's doing and is not, I mean, not that it would matter if someone was heavily pierced or tattooed, um, but like, it was like, no, she just really likes, like, she's a serious, she, she presents as a very serious person. Anyway, but like, some people are like, don't go swimming for four to six weeks. And I'm like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, if you know, tell me <laughs> in the comments, but I feel like people will have different opinions. So anyway, but I, yeah, so I can't swim right now at work anyway, but, um, so I may or may not go in a lot this next couple weeks. I haven't decided yet. Um, but yeah, okay, it's 9.22, that gives me some buffer time to get my prescription and go to the passport, to the post office to do my passport stuff. Um, and look at that, 34 minutes. So yeah, this was short, I did a good job. Um, yeah, but I'm excited about having a lot more knitting time, hopefully going to bed early, doing some reading, you know. <laughs> just like, I'm trying to do it all, you can't do it all, it's impossible. So, I don't know, it's just like, yeah, how do you want to divide your time? It's complicated. Life is all about prioritization and sometimes it's hard to know what to do in the need because there's no right answer how to use your time. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I finished David Copperfield also. I forgot about that. Yeah, I finally finished that. That was good. 
I have some more Dickens on my shelf. Um, my mom got a bunch of Dickens on her Audible account because I guess they were just free with the subscription that she has. Um, so I like listening to Dickens, but sometimes I tune it out and then I'm like, well, what's going on? There's too many characters. Like, you know, it's like older, an older thing that to, to, to read. Sometimes it's the language isn't as easily understood. You kind of have to like really put your focus into it. And I prefer, sometimes I prefer audiobooks for that kind of thing because someone's reading it to you and you're not having to like process, read and process every sentence. But yeah, I don't know. When I was home, I read The New Yorker every day because there's New Yorkers around and I, you know, have time to do that. And I always, I used to always tell myself, oh, I should subscribe to that and I should get it and I should read it every day. But and then I go home and I completely forget it. I forget about it. When I say home, I realize that I've been staying home about Vermont and Baltimore. When I get back to wherever I'm living, I forget about it immediately. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really have time. If someone were to like narrate the narr the articles then I would like consider like listening to them actually and maybe that exists but I doubt it so um yeah I I don't I don't read the New Yorker when I come back to wherever I live I just don't so anyway uh yeah I guess that's it so yeah <laughs> this is so short but thank you for watching this has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma Bye.